What does it take to be a successful manager or leader? It requires many different qualities, skills, and perspectives. As I have guided many along this path, I've created over a hundred hours of programs on this complex and yet fascinating subject. This segment shares with you the content of a subject that I work on frequently with managers and leaders, delegation. Now this can be a part of a keynote or a workshop. Enjoy. You can't do it all. I realize you're very capable and you can do it better than anyone else. But you cannot do it all. Those were tough words for a client of mine to hear. But he was working seven days a week. His health and family were suffering. And his work still wasn't getting done. Perhaps you can identify with that? Actually, I wish I had a quarter for every time I had to give this message to a manager or a director, or vice president, or president, or business owner, it doesn't matter the title. Executives need to understand being a leader often means letting go of control in order to have more power to get things done. That may sound contradictory, but as you move up in management, you need to let go of some of the doing functions and implement more of your thinking functions. This may sound easy, but as one of my clients said, and he had great resistance, I got promoted because I do these things so well. Why should I let go of them now after working all these years to get really good at them? Because now you are in a leadership position. Now it's time for you to pass on your base knowledge to others so that they can carry on your legacy of how to do it right. Now you will use everything you've learned as your foundation for leading. You'll be using more strategic thinking and planning and overseeing, motivating others and forecasting skills. But as you move into these new responsibilities, you'll need to delegate some of your old responsibilities to others. Yes, the big D word. However, please don't confuse delegating with dumping. Dumping is where you anoint someone with responsibility saying, from now on, you'll be responsible for running that team meeting since I won't be coming to the meetings anymore and turning on your heel and walking out. <laughs> if you care about how well the work is done, and if you don't want it to boomerang back to you with all kinds of problems, then set that person up for success. But how? I'm about to share with you a process that extracts from your brain the key aspects of how you do something, while also considering the capabilities, motivations, and the learning style of the recipient. I call this a thoughtful, responsible, planned delegation. The first step is one that most of my clients really like. That is to make a list of all the things you're going to be able to do with the free time that you're going to have after delegating, whether it's personal or business hours. Then you need to make a different list of all of the functions that you should be passing on to others. Perhaps it's compiling those numbers for that report or someone who continually brings their problems for you to solve. When one of the executives I was working with looked at his list of all the 10 different items that he would be delegating, he got really excited and thought about what he's not going to have to do anymore. He started to see that light at the end of the tunnel. Wouldn't you like to see that too? The next stage of the process may take a week or so for you to think through because now you'll need to analyze yourself. View yourself as a scientist and simultaneously the guinea pig. For the next week, observe yourself on how you do that function that you're going to be delegating. What goes through your mind before you do it? What questions do you consider? What concerns or red flags do you look for? What are the politics or the relationship issues involved? When the task is done and done well, what does it look like or sound like? What are the potential pitfalls, barriers, or challenges? As you're thinking up all the answers, take notes, write it down, keep a journal. After completing this, one of my clients was so amazed with how smart she is and how much she really knows. Why? Because she was unconscious of that knowledge. We're turning what's unconscious into conscious and giving you more control over it in order to teach others. But hold on. 
even though this is terrific information, it's not time to go share this with your staff member yet. Now it's time to think about what motivates that person who you're passing this on to. What would really make them want to do this work? Is it they would be getting more visibility? Do they enjoy learning something new? Or maybe you're preparing them for a promotion. Be realistic, but think about what's in it for them. Then, think about how that person learns best. Review what has worked in the past with this person when you're showing them something new. Was it simply telling them and they got it? Or did you have to show them or, or put it in writing? Or have them write it down as they watch you do it? Then finally, the cincher that will make it stick. To light their fire, set timelines for when they will finish their training period and when they'll be ready for full responsibility. This lets them know that you're serious about this really happening. In the end, you will feel the rewards of mentoring, the pride of seeing someone learn from your experience and watching them blossom towards their full potential. And as that overworking executive I mentioned earlier said, another great benefit is that I'm only working five days a week and I got a promotion because now I'm getting things done through others.